Hello my soccer universe, let's uh, conclude match day 5 of the Nations League. Again, quite some interesting stuff happening a lot in League B. The problem is I saw mostly League A stuff and I didn't have really the chance to watch highlights. However, what I did is now everything is rearranged a little bit. I exchanged a few shirts. I did not exchange the Dutch jerseys because I could not resist having the World Cup 2010 final up there so yeah uh, but you know everything a little bit re rearranged um, and again we have the ranking as before i also want to note um, we almost we almost had a second team in the final four alas there was a late penalty let's start in league a i actually saw uh, all of uh, netherlands against bosnia i actually thought we have belgium england at six o'clock that was what I, I, I was giggled for them was a little bit down i was going yeah shall i watch turkey russia which probably would have been maybe a more interesting game i said no let's watch the dutch they are your uh, other favorite national national team and i did and i have to say uh was not a bad game all, all overall the one thing that really bothered my mind is that all four goals in that one were uh, tap-ins coming from a uh, pass from the right side. It, it was staggering in, in a way. And also uh, in all halves, I mean the Dutch had, I think, uh, they hit the post relatively early on, but then uh, Bosnia had, had a great chance and right on the uh, counter, well, not, uh, not the counter, but the thing, uh, Borga also Dumfries who plays it into Gini Vinaldum. 1-0 for the Dutch and then a very similar way, maybe a little bit closer to go over Berghuis to Van Aldum. and then um, uh, Luc de Jong had also a goal. S similar stuff, I mean almost a copy of the sex sex second goal uh, taken out and uh, there were chances to score other other goals but the only, only thing that worked was uh, get the ball from the left to, to the right and then put it back into two to the center and someone is tap, tapping it in so but it should have been three nil at the half because the um the young goal was absolutely legit goal uh there was no offside whatsoever but you know we don't have var and that's the one one thing yes yes i really thought um var is missing. You see actually how, how many mistakes are made when there is no VAR. Way more than otherwise. Uh, the second half, similarly, uh, I mean, Bosnia kind of regrouped and can I say the Bosnia jerseys is white with black numbers? Looked off. Looked awful to me. Uh, again, Bosnia has, has a chance and then Dumfries assists Depay to make it 3-0. Uh, but Prevliak, after this for Vizca, pull, pulls for back, but I always had the feeling, yes, uh, Bosnia was always dangerous, and yes, there was no Jacko because you know Rome, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, and, and Prevliak, I think, had, had a huge, huge chance to, to make it 3 so that was always there. But I, I think it was always closer to the Dutch uh, adding a fourth than Bosnia scoring a second. In a way, it was a well-deserved win for the Dutch, uh, who with that result basically relegated Bosnia into League B and kept themselves into contention. In the late game in the, game in the group, I mean, I saw it in the goal zone as part of a three-way pack of education highlights from other games. Uh, Italy completely dominated Poland and that with a... I don't want to say makeshift squad, but they were quite some absences. I mean, the back line, Emerson, Bastoni, Acerbi and Florenzi. Uh, I thought, oh, Lewandowski will have some fun, fun, fun with it. But I have to say that at least the midfield with Barella, uh, Giorgini and Locatelli, um, who is not a, a regular starter, but that looked low, looked fine. And then you have Bernadeschi and Insigne uh, also making a whole lot of trouble up, up front. The only one, Belotti, that I'm not so uh, sold on because he's always, you know, I think he misses too much chances, but so does him. It, Italy doesn't really have a striker of the class of Inzaghi or Vieri at the moment who just make the goals. Uh, that's maybe a little bit annoying, but Italy completely dominated Poland. I mean, in the first, first half, Poland didn't even have a shot or an attempt on goal. Italy should have led, led, led by two, three goals. Um, I think there was a goal ruled out right, rightly so because Pelotti blocked the goalkeeper uh, there through Insigne. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I, I understood that one. Uh, was there another? I think that that was that. A penalty gives them the goal. Uh, typically, Jorginho pen, uh, pen penalty. The second half again. Uh, it's all 
all Italy. Poland a little bit better, better in the game, but it's all Italy. Uh, and I was uh, actually quite, quite happy when Berardi came on because, you know, they played in Regionale Emilia where Sassuolo plays at home. So I think it was really uh, pretty, pretty cool to have the two local boys play in the uh, in the national, national team. And yeah, Mancini also, due to COVID, wasn't there. So it was Albergo Evani, who looks completely different than I had him in my the back of my mind. So I have to look him up again. I think all the chances for Poland got uh, wiped out when Gorowski was sent, sent over in the 77th. I think before then a penalty and now there's another penalty should have been given for uh, it. it. I mean, the hand was clearly dangling out of the Polish defender, hit the, uh, the ball, hit, he hit the hand there. So that, that was the point about Berardi in the 84th after the senior insist makes it 2-0. This should have been a rout in every regard. So Italy looking really really strong really 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 strong i mean i don't know how strong poland is but italy was quite impressive in that one um i think at the beginning belgium was also quite impressive against england um Tielemans with a doubly deflected shot after Lukaku assist makes it 1-0 and I think uh, Be Be Belgium really tried to get the England English out, out of the game quickly because England needed about 30 minutes to get in uh, by which point they were 2-0 down and the 2-0 uh, wonderful free kick by Mertens that was pure class uh, settled the game. England, I think, in the second half had two chances from that uh, position as well. England actually fought themselves back in, into the game and could the, keep the game level. However, um, Belgium just was more, clean, more, more clinically did it uh, at the beginning when it counted most and after that they didn't really need to do much more. So, uh, I have to say, uh, despite England not playing all that badly, I think it was a very uh, deserved win for uh, Belgium and very easy win and I've had to say those England jerseys remind me a lot about the uh, France 98 jerseys and Belgium almost would have made it into the final four well, if it wouldn't have been for a late Ericsson penalty both goals for Denmark scored by Ericsson to to do to penalties Iceland had a late equalizer to Kjartansson in the 80 85th and I think they're hanging on nope give up a penalty and Denmark wins and as we will see this keeps them in contention to catch Belgium. Uh, in League B then we had uh, two qualifiers from um, Thursday, Slovakia beating Scotland 1-0, Czech Republic 1-0 over Israel, Finland beating Bulgaria 2-1, Wales 1-0 over Ireland, Turkey, Russia was probably, a, this must have been a real crazy game, definitely helped by a red card uh, for a Russian um, in the 24th minute for holding. Um, Russia was 1 1 up, and then uh, Turkey made 3 1, uh, third goal a penalty, and then Kuziaev 3 2. As I said, I didn't see much, maybe I'll watch the house a little bit later. Serbia took actually lead in Hungary, but Hungary could equalize uh, through Kalmar in the first half still. Um, Austria, we have to talk about that group in, in, anyway a little bit more. Uh, Austria 2 1 win over non but that was so boring and hard work for Austria because Northern Ireland just sat back as much as they could um, and tried to hit them on the counter again. The first half they actually were, the, uh, were threatening goal more than Austria was. Um, bringing Ramftl on and going with three on the back uh, actually helped Austria. And you bring on Anatovic and Schaub and Grubic. They kind of changed a little, little bit the game, but before Schaub and Grubic came on, uh, McGinnis scores for Norda I thought this is it this will be it for Austria uh, but those two really really changed the game because Schaub, Grubic uh, assists Schaub to make it 1-0 and Anatovic assists Grubic to make it 1-1 uh, one, one. and then in the 87th 2-1 uh, for Austria fortunately because that actually puts them now at the doorstep of League A because Norway is in a whole lot of heap of trouble they, thanks to one positive COVID test and the protocol of Norway basically said the whole team has to be in quarantine has now you know I have not been following super close but seemingly now uh, the players can go back to their clubs but still have to be in quarantine and now uh, Norway is scrambling to get a squad together of second string players to play Austria uh, on Tuesday otherwise the game will be handed to Austria they postponed for now the game between Romania and Norway so this is not yet awarded to Romania 
Uh, probably rightfully so, because you probably can find some very spot to play that game if you need be, but still, what a mess. And I think the no Norwegian authorities are a little bit too strict there. I have, have, have said it's, it's such a contrast to Sweden, where Sweden, yeah, we keep everything open. Yeah, and also Austria lockdown is starting tomorrow, which kind of depresses me a little bit as well. Not that I don't mind the lockdown, but you know, they don't keep schools open. I think that's a travesty. Anyway, so in that group, Austria uh, holds now the upper hand. They need a draw against Nor Norway to qualify. And let's see if that game happens in League C. Uh, North Macedonia boost themselves with a 2-1 over Estonia and Armenia beats Georgia. So, I mean, the two that played against Gazira have complete different results and they still this actually eliminates Georgia from contention for going up. Albania keeps their chances, but Belarus keeps winning and Greece and Slovenia also get wins. So, uh, for the standings now, League A, and also I want you to, when I look at the standings, look, look at the goal average, because you see the lower we go into the leagues, the smaller the goal average gets, which I think is kind of telling where the better soccer is being played in, in a way. So Italy and the Dutch are now a one and two. Uh, Poland still has a chance to win if they beat the Dutch and Bosnia beats Italy, then Poland can still qualify, but it's a smidgen of a chance there. Uh, Belgium and Denmark are the only ones that can qualify for the final four. They have a head-to-head -head come, come, come up, but Belgium looking very much in pole position. They just need to avoid defeat. Um, the other two we talked about yesterday. Uh, then, as I said, uh, B1, Norway has not... Uh, there's some, uh, Norway has not played yet, so uh, we have to see how that is uh, will go. Uh, but Austria looking uh, rather comfortable on top there at the moment. Uh, Scotland and the Czech Republic are the only two left in contention for being promoted there. Uh, Israel and Slovakia, Slovakia looking in trouble going, going down, which is kind of a little bit, is a little bit crazy, I have to say. Uh, the most interesting one is League B3, where Russia, Hungary, Turkey and Serbia, I mean, three still can go up and Turkey and Serbia still can go down. Uh, absolute madness. Uh, this one will look at the games to be played there, but they are all everything is open. And I you see a lot of draws in there that can make a whole lot of difference there. Wales and Finland, though, rather rather clear. It's very disappointing what Ireland and Bulgaria are doing there. And then in League C, uh, the first one we talked yesterday, North Macedonia and Armenia are still in contention to uh, be promoted. Um, with North Macedonia hold, holding a watch, Slovenia and Greece will do, dig, dig it out on the last day for the final spot. Uh, Slovenia needing only to avoid defeat and then Belarus and Albania similarly going for the last spot. Now, for winning it all, the Nations League, we have France, Belgium, Italy now looking in pole position and Germany also. It might well be that those four will make up the final four. Uh, however, Spain, Denmark, the Netherlands and Poland still have something to say, have a little say in there as well. Uh, and the remainder is kind of how League A is sorted out. Let's look at the final match day. As a Poland and Netherlands is a big matchup. Uh, Belgium, Denmark is a final uh, to get this final spot. Uh, England, Iceland, is the game for the golden analyst. We have to see whether Austria and Norway will be played. This would be head to head to get promoted. Um, as you know, Czechs and uh, Scots play up and the other go, go down, so uh, that is interesting. Um, but um, there's no head to head to head similar for the other group with Hungary, Turkey, uh, Serbia, and Russia. However, um, there's a lot to play. I think those two met, uh, uh, probably those two games are probably the most interesting ones in there. Um, head to head between Wales and Finland, F Wales needs to avoid defeat. We have um, head to head between Albania and Belarus, we have a head to head between Armenia and North Macedonia, we have a head to head between Greece and Slovenia, so lots of finals. And the rest also a little bit head to head so to avoid relegation. It's all gonna happen on Wednesday. So let me know which games you watched. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel because it will keep you updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!